Hi, I'm Andy from Soundcraft, and welcome to another video about the VI Series software features. In this video, we're going to look at the wireless mic monitoring capability on the VI Series. Now, this is a feature that Soundcraft pioneered back in 2012 on the VI with the AKG, WMS, and DMS wireless systems. And we've now extended it to work with certain Shure and Sennheiser systems. Well, wireless mic monitoring essentially enables us to be able to display the status information of compatible wireless handheld or body-worn transmitters on the console's displays. And by status information, I mean the remaining battery level, RF signal strength, the audio level and clipping indications inside the wireless system itself, and in some cases whether the mic or the receiver is muted. So all incredibly useful information, particularly if you're operating in a venue or any situation where you might not have a dedicated wireless tech looking after all of that. Now what's more, we get to see that information not on a central screen somewhere, but right on the channel strip where that microphone is patched. So there's never any doubt which status information goes with which artist or presenter. So how do we set this up? Well, we just need to make an Ethernet connection from the wireless receiver control network ports to the Ethernet port of the console, otherwise known as the high Qnet port. And then if Dante is being used for the audio of the wireless system, we just also need to make another connection between the Dante Ethernet switch and the console's Dante card. So over here, we've got two of the latest model receivers from Shaw and Sennheiser, and an Ethernet switch to connect it all up with. So down here, we've got a Shaw Axiant Digital AD4Q and a Sennheiser Digital 6000 EM6000 receiver. And we've got the Dante audio connection from both hooked up to the console's Dante port via the left-hand side of this Ethernet switch. And on the right-hand side of the switch, we've got a connection from the control network ports of the two receivers over to the high QNet port of the console so that we can tap into the wireless monitoring data. Now on this switch, we've actually configured two VLANs, one on the left side and one on the right, to separate the Dante audio on the left side from the control data on the right, which isn't essential, but it's certainly recommended, especially if you've got a large Dante network set up. So we've patched in the audio from those two receivers, and we're just using channel one of each of those two receivers, and we've got the two mic signals coming up over on the console surface. So we've patched in the audio from those two receivers and we're just using channel one of each of the receivers and we've got the two mic signals coming up over here on the surface. So that's the Shaw one, two, and over here that's the Sennheiser. So now how do we get the monitoring information to come up? Well, it's really easy to set up. First of all, we go to the menu system page and to the network tab. And then we're going to select the address tab. Now what we have to do first is make a network connection with the control ports of the wireless receivers. So we need to know what the IP addresses of the control side of those receivers are and set the console to a different address in the same subnet. Well, to make it simpler, we can use automatically assigned addresses if we've got a DHCP server set up on the network. Now, in this case, we are using DHCP assigned addresses, so we've selected DHCP mode on the console. And the console has now got a valid IP address. Now, a tip here is always to check that the IP address you want is displayed over here on the left, which shows that it's actually been assigned to the console. Now, if we were using fixed IP addresses instead, then I would just switch here over to manual mode instead, and I'd set the required addresses and subnet mask up using these encoders over here. Well, now we've got the IP addresses set up, we can go to the wireless mic tab of the network page, and then we need to enable wireless monitoring by switching on the wireless button here. And now what we see is that the console has found all the attached Shaw and Sennheiser receivers and is showing them here in the device list. Now each channel of the receiver is shown as a separate item in that list. Now the console has found the receivers, the next step is to tell the console which audio patch point is being used for each receiver. So we do that by selecting the receiver channel in the list with this scroll here. So I'll just select channel one of this first receiver and then pressing the audio patch button here. Now this opens a patching grid which allows us to tell 
the console which audio patch is associated with this channel of wireless. So in this case we know that for the first Shaw receiver channel we're using local Dante channel 1 for that receiver. So we'll just select Dante 1. We'll close the patch page and I'll scroll down and select the next receiver channel. Now I'll miss out the other uh, Shaw receiver channels on the quad receiver because we're not using them here and I'll go down to the first channel of the Sennheiser receiver. Press the audio patch button again and opens up the, uh, the screen and we know for this receiver that we're using Dante channel 5 so I'll select that and what you can see now if I close the patch page is that the device list is now showing all the, re the receivers and all the audio patch points that are associated with them. That they, that's where the audio is coming in from those receivers. So another useful feature here is that there's a locate button in the list here which allows you to flash the front panel of the different devices in order to identify them in a physical rack. So if, we're, if we've got a rack of a lot of receivers and we're not sure which one's which, we can use our locate button here to identify the receiver. So I'll press the locate button, we're selected on the first shore channel here, and then we'll see what the result of that is on the front panel of the unit. And you can see the front panel is flashing to indicate that's the unit we've selected. So if I go down to the first channel of the Sennheiser unit, I can do the same thing. I can press the locate button on that receiver channel. And then we can see the Sennheisers throwing up an indication showing which receiver channel is being located. And that's all there is to it, because now when we go over to our channel strips over here, where the audio from these two mics is, and we look up at the top of the input strip, we can now see icons showing us the status information for our two mic transmitters. So let's have a closer look at that display. We can see there's battery level indicators. that This changes colour from green to amber to red as the remaining time drops. And you can see at the moment we've got full batteries on both the Shaw and the Sennheiser, which is good. We've got a um, RF, good or bad indicator, which is green at the moment. Below that, a meter showing signal integrity in green. And um, that also, uh, on the, the right-hand side there, is an audio level meter. There's the Sennheiser one, there's the Shaw one. And that also includes a clip indication showing clipping within the wireless channel. Now, if we need more detailed information, we can just go into our input section of the channel strip by pressing here at the top. And we, now we can see more information down in the Vistonic screen. So an actual indication of the battery level here, and if we were using rechargeable batteries, we'd get an actual time indication there. And larger RF meters, and signal integrity meters, and you can also see the receiver username and the frequency. Well, if I wanted to repatch one of these receivers to another channel on the desk, so let's unpatch the Shaw receiver here and go into this channel here and patch in Dante 1. And now you can see that not only has the audio moved to this next channel, but also the, can, the monitoring information has moved with it. So you only have to do that initial mapping operation with all the receiver channels once, and then the info display always stays with the audio whenever you patch it on the console. So if we've got Dante connections for our audio, then we will only ever see the receiver gain control here on our screen. But what if we wanted to connect our wireless receivers using analog? Well, I've set up the Shaw mic as an analog input to the console just to show you what happens there. And what we can see now is slightly differently. We get a switch here called Desk Receiver, and that actually allows us to choose either the receiver gain, remotely being controlled by the console, or you can switch it to Desk, and then you get the Desk Console mic preamp control with its pad. So you get the choice of which gain you want to control if you're using analog. If you're using Dante, then you'll only ever see the receiver gain there. Some final notes. The mic patch mapping that you set up will be stored when you save your show file. So you only have to do that once with a particular setup. Well, that's it. 
a great feature for keeping tabs on your wireless mic parameters without looking away from the channel strip that those mics are actually assigned to. For more information, download the version 6.4 software user guide from the soundcraft.com website. Thanks very much for watching and look out for more videos in this series.